we're on Facebook, right? You are. All right, hello. Oh. We're live. Hello. Still getting us up on Instagram. Hello. Hello, hello. Look who's here. Special guest. Okay. Little shy girl. <laughs> Little shy girl. She never comes out of, you know, she has a two, a two story apartment. Mm -hmm. How many of you with cats and dogs have a two story apartment for your pet? Okay. <laughs> no way. We, we built this for Gloria. And Michael put carpeting in so she should be really comfortable. Can you pull her little face up so we can see her? Gloria kind of runs the show. Can you put her, pull her face up so we can see her? Yeah. Let's do this. Oh, oh there oh she is. Oh my god. Okay. Hi, Thanks, Gloria. Girl. Okay. <laughs> do you, did she? She dances. Oh my god. She likes this. I don't know why. <laughs> but she, doesn't, she doesn't try to break free. She'll just go, you know, it must be right. You like that, don't you? That's yeah. So She's going to scratch my eyes out. I love her little mole. Her beauty what? mark. Oh, yeah. What well, was that beauty mark? We, we got a big discount when yeah. we bought it. <laughs> That's what you said. They were going to have it removed. What's that? The breeder was? No, Suzanne was. Really? Why yeah. she didn't like it? And I, and she's, because it was an imprint. I was like, are you kidding? That's her personality. Yeah. That's like, that's, so that's her Cindy Crawford mole. And she Marilyn was like, Monroe. oh, you're right. She left it. And Gloria really is that femme fatale trope. <laughs> like, she really is. She embodies it. She does. Yeah. She's a femme fatale. <laughs> there are people tuning in going, Mysterious. what's going on with a cat? It is cat day. Yeah, oh, is not. Okay. It is. I can't oh. really understand. Oh, so, her claws are out. So let's put you here. Okay. <laughs> no. Well, that's welcome it. everyone. Goodbye. It is Wednesday. You know, that's what it is with cats. They're unpredictable, but that's what we love about them. Because yeah. if it was a dog, the dog would go, oh, what's this?
Dot-com for $29.99 or more and you get a free styling gel it's the same retail value $29.99 also the free gift offers you guys are, are usually limited time so if you want this please jump in today latest tomorrow to get the free gift if you're watching this at a later date um, I can't guarantee that the offer will be good oh hello oh my god she's so pretty and Are you going to tell them how she tried to take you out the other day, oh, Alan? Yeah. Oh. I don't know if you can you see that? Oh yeah, they can see. <laughs> I was brushing her, which I do every day. That's another reason why she's crazy about me. <laughs> but I was brushing her chest and her tummy, and I think I may have hit a sensitive place. I don't know what it is. But it could have been her nipple. <laughs> that could be sensitive. And then she struck out at me here. Look at that. Yeah. She, she, she got a vein. Okay. Yeah, you said blood shot out of your hand. It, it squirted out of my hand. Oh my I mean, it looked like I murdered somebody. Oh you see the bed. God. The bed was filled with blood. And the floor, so and I'm dramatic. running around looking for something. It was murder on the dance floor. Yeah. I bet you people are having dinner love hearing all this, right? right? right. Okay, say, say goodbye, Gracie. I love her eyes, because in the daylight, they're really blue, but then when it gets they're dark... They're icy. Yeah, they're icy. Then when it gets dark, they get really brown, because her pupils get dilated. You're okay. Okay. <laughs> Put you down here. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Well, I have to imagine too about this gel that a lot of those um, like drugstore or you know hair gels that have a really firm hold. I mean, it, they probably have a lot of chemicals in them to produce such a firm hold. Right. And this, like, look at his hair. It's fully slicked back right now, but it's soft to the touch. Like when I touch it, it's soft. Yeah. Yeah, it is soft, isn't it? Yeah. So it does the trick, but it still keeps the hair, you know, nice. I love this product. Okay. Use this product, you'll live to be 120. <laughs> and your hair will be fabulous. Are we allowed to say that, Mom? We're allowed to say <laughs> that's Al Lyon. That's Al How's Lyon. That claim? Um, I do want to mention if you are someone who jumped in with our brand new Grow Back Shield and Shine, congratulations. We have blown through that initial order. We are sold out. Wow. Yeah, we sold out of Shield and Shine. Um, it is also a styling product. It is a heat protectant slash styling product. So the, the two products are a little bit different. I would say this one, like Violet said, has a nice soft hold. It's great for curls. It's great um, to put at the root to give you some volume if you want to do a blow dry. Mm -hmm. um, they're both beautiful products, slightly just different formulas. So I would say it's good for you to test and see what you like. We are reordering that Shield and Shine immediately, and uh, we should have more in about four weeks. Okay. So uh, what do they have to buy in order to get the free gift? Um, anything for $29.99 at SuzanneSummers.com. Okay, and what is this usually sold for? $29.99, $29 Nice. And if you buy something for $29.99, you get a gift for $29.99. Well, Marty just ordered the neck serum combo, and she's going to get this as a free gift, and she's pretty hyped about okay. that. Okay. It's awesome. Cool. Yeah. I love this product. I love all of these products we have here. I love our shampoo. Yeah. I love it so much. Is that the volumizing? This one is nourishing, but I love both of them. They're both great. The, I use the volumizing one because my hair is so long it gets weighted down, but we don't use SLS in these products, which is sodium lauryl sulfate, which is a really harsh chemical that's used to clean cars and it, it creates those like suds. So you leave it on and then after two or five minutes you get your hair more wet and you can do the lather. I still get a good lather, especially when I rinse and repeat, I still get a great lather with this. And it's great to know that all those toxins aren't going directly on my head, like right next to my brain. Because, I mean, I don't need toxins in my brain. <laughs> There's enough going on in there. So. What's going on in your brain right now? 
Hmm. Now, what's going on in your brain in the last day that you keep thinking about? Mm, that's a good. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll I'll hum a thing for you. Uh, honestly, I had a really embarrassing experience. I don't want to go into too much detail about it, well, but it. no, I was just. We're all friends here. I was just um, sharing a piece of work that I did recently with a group of people, and I think anytime you're sharing your art, it feels very vulnerable. I felt very exposed. Uh, and I didn't stop thinking about it for a few days. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just embarrassed, you know. Vulnerable. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, the, all my doodles. Yeah. I don't feel that way about my doodles. I don't worry if someone doesn't like them or like, you know, because I have thousands of them. Yeah. So you don't like this? How about this? <laughs> and you don't like this? How about that? Okay. Did Danny ever get vulnerable? when she did a performance or released a book? Like, did you ever notice her? Never when she released a book. Okay. Uh, on stage, probably the first time mm -hmm. she was on stage at the MGM Grand. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had only had one week of rehearsal somewhere in, in Pennsylvania. Can't remember where it was. There was a nightclub there. And we just wanted to do a week warm up. And uh, so we go in there, and during the show, we hear a noise, and it's, it's coming into the showroom. And motorcycles and people yelling. And it turned out that while we were doing the show, there was a gang fight going on in the parking oh, lot. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That was memorable. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. So then the MGM Grand burned down, which was tragic, really tragic. And that's where we had our, uh, our business arrangement. And we'd only done, I think, two or three uh, dates there before it burned down. So we went into the Sands Hotel, and uh, Suzanne was working with uh, Shecky Green. Shecky Green, I don't think he's with us anymore. But he's one of the funniest guys ever, ever, ever. And so Suzanne was on, and I got word that the hostages had been released in Iran. So I got word to her, and she told the audience. The audience got excited, and uh, they all stood up, and they, she sang, God Bless America. And Shecky was backstage with me saying, how the bumble am I going to follow that? <laughs> so I said, Jackie, it's your business. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. I remember you talking about that. Yeah. Suzanne really knew how to read an audience. Aww. She did. She did. She had a relationship with her audience. She knew what they were responding to, and she would tweak her act all the time. And I'm missing Zanny today. Actually, you know, the, uh, what's interesting is that uh, granddaughter Daisy. Granddaughter Daisy, I love calling her that. Yeah, I have to identify her title, okay? <laughs> granddaughter Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> she was heavily influenced by watching Suzanne on stage because she's gone from doing a big band show to doing a very personal show and a lot of a conversation in between the music. And she's really good at it now. And uh, so she has a show coming up soon, but mainly her new album has just been released. It's called Toothpick. And where do they, they, where do they go? Daisy World, right? Um, she probably yeah. has the link in bio. She has the link in her bio at Daisy World on Instagram, and yeah. I posted it the other day, and too. And the great thing is, it's like a gift, because you can pay whatever you want for it. How's that for a gift? Yeah. And it's a beautiful, really beautiful album called Toothpick. I don't know what that means. Do you know what it means? She, she was talking about it with me and said that the whole... I might be butchering this though, so I don't want to say too Okay, much. you know, while you're doing that, yeah. I've decided I'm going to have a tequila. 
um, she was talking about it with me and she said she just wanted to name it Toothpick, I think, but it turns out that the whole album was about getting unstuck in a certain situation or something, so it kind of made sense. With she actually has out. something on her story today describing why she called it Toothpick. So if you go go to, look at that because I'm you go to it Daisy World on Instagram, you can look at her story and she talks she talks a little bit about the name generation. Yeah. Also she's a Hamel and she's obtuse in a cool way. Yeah. It runs in the genes. Abstract. Yeah. I love that. What kind of tequila are you having today? Casa Dragones. Nice. Casa so, Dragones. Silver? Are you a silver tequila guy? Uh, this is uh, this is the silver blanco. 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 Oh, yeah, that's what I meant. Blanco. As you can tell, I know a lot about tequila. <laughs> um, oh, here she comes again. Yeah, Gloria's Hi, Gloria. Really making her rounds. I think Hi, she's Gloria. playing hard to get a little bit. Hi. We didn't bring Bunny today, so Gloria. She's exploring more. Every yes. time Bunny's here, she knows and she stays in her bedroom quarters. And Alan sequesters her. Yeah. Um, Caroline, how many hair, skin, and nail vitamins do you recommend to take daily? The dosage is four. So it is four of the tablets of hair, skin, and nail renew. And that gives you a full spectrum of biotin, keratin complex, collagen peptides, and silicon. Um, so it is like a super multivitamin for the health and growth uh, to support healthy hair, skin, and nails. So I'm wearing this beautiful gold chain that was given to me by Bruce and Caroline. And at the end of it is this. Aww. I love seeing it on you. Me great. too. It's awesome. Really great. Zanny's little fingers. <laughs> Tiny fingers. Yeah. I can't even get it on my baby finger. Yeah. Well, here's to Suzanne. Cheers to that. You know yeah. what? I'm going to cheers you with that. Okay. <laughs> cheers to Zanny. I've been, you know, some days I feel her more than others for no particular reason, but I've also noticed like sometimes I get scared. I get scared at night. I get scared sometimes about like tsunamis and stuff. Tsunamis? Yeah, I don't know why. So <laughs> now I think I just pray to Zanny and I just say like, okay, keep me safe tonight. And keep I feel her. Keep me safe from the tsunami. Well, I'm not really worried about a tsunami where I live because I'm not close enough to the water, but like I get scared of people climbing into my window. <laughs> Did you tell them about your near-death experience in Thailand? Yeah, I did have a near-death experience in Thailand where I was on this small boat and we were caught in the middle of a storm. Yeah, it was really bad. And everyone was vomiting because everyone got so seasick and people were screaming and the boat was going. This was Thailand? Thailand, yeah. When were you in Thailand? In 2018. Just like a little day yeah. trip. One it was those, a little like, boat trip. You get on a boat, you go on a little and day trip. And they said trip. the weather's bad, but it'll get better once we go farther out. And mm -hmm. um, no, it got worse. So they had to turn around the ship, but we couldn't see anything. There was zero visibility. You couldn't see land anywhere. And then the guys started pulling out Google Maps. They didn't have radar. Yeah, they started pulling out Google Maps. And they got so stressed that they were smoking cigarettes on the front of the boat in the rain. It, and they didn't even pass out life jackets. Like, it was actually so scary. <laughs> well, didn't you notice some of these things when you were getting on? No, there was, the weather was fine when no, you got the on. No, it was like no something that jackets. came out of... No, there were life jackets on the boat, but they didn't pass them out. Like, no. they didn't make sure... Because, you know, when you're in a crisis situation, like, sometimes you don't think of the most obvious thing. Like, yeah. I wasn't thinking, oh, I need so a So no one jacket. went and got a life jacket? Some people had them on, but for some reason... I don't know why that didn't occur to me. Like, yeah, when you get on, they give you a life jacket. You know what occurred to they Violet? They didn't tell us where it was. Right you know now. what occurred to Violet? You want to explain? I gave hugs. No, you started praying. Hard. I started praying. And I started giving hugs to people. She, you were told to give hugs. People you didn't know? 
Yes, I gave everyone hugs. She went into a deep, like, I was connect like, with God, we're, Source, we're gonna Jesus, whatever you believe all in. love. Let's put the love out there. And they told her, Source told her, God told her to go comfort everyone. And she walked around the boat to all these people that she'd never met and said, it's going to be okay. It's all going to be fine. And yeah. guess yeah, what? Nice. It calmed. Yeah. It calmed. It, the weather cleared. The, I mean, I don't think it cleared no, because of me, but no, it's I do because think of it God, was, because of because in those situations, I think you always want comfort and to to know you're not alone. And panic spreads. Exactly. So you have to try to like. Well, but see if you also would, if you had hugged me, uh -huh. if I was on that boat, I would have said, "We're gonna die." <laughs> Well, well I was and also, reading. I remember you, when you were telling me the story, you were like, and I had hugged everyone, and like, and a lot of them didn't speak English, so it was just a, yeah. a human response yeah. of like knowing we're going to be okay. We're, but she's like, but then I, I had to go to the captain and the co-captain, and like it was kind of awkward, but I knew I had to connect with them as well, and yeah, those, I, those boats don't have captains. <laughs> well, the guy who owned the boat. You know, I remember was, one like, guy has a hat. Yeah. Yeah. He was getting a little bit um, like egotistical about when we first got on the boat. He was making these harsh turns and just trying to like for his own pleasure, I think. And it just did not, it wasn't comfortable. And then it got terrible. So, so, so this is where this I, weird where fear of tsunami comes from. I don't know. I just, it was, I learned that scary things happen <laughs> and that uh, you just kind of like go with the flow. I, you know, I oh, was, and to check safety precautions first. On yes, before, before you going go on, on a random boat. Right. Yeah, I, I was on a random boat with uh, Leslie and Stephen when they were like this big, and <laughs> I took them to uh, Puerto Vallarta. Okay. And this is in the sixties, sixties or seventies. I can't remember seventies. And uh, there was a place called Yalapa. And you could only get there by boat. So every day there'd be the Yalapa boat. And we'd get on the Yalapa boat and it would take us to Yalapa, where they had a great beach and they had a little bar on the beach. And you'd frolic there all day. And then at three o'clock, the Yalapa boat goes back to Puerto Vallarta. And on the way back that day, it was a skinny boat that was very long. And the waves were coming at us from the side and the boat was really doing this, okay? It was terrifying. And there was nothing I can do with uh, mm -hmm. Leslie and Stephen. Uh, I didn't want to, I didn't want to alarm, I and mean, they were young enough to really not, well, I assume they didn't know what was going on, but it was terrifying, oh. really. Terrifying. Was it in a storm? Well, it wasn't a, well, I, mean, I guess it was a storm, but the waves were bash, bashing against the side of the boat. Oh. Yeah, the other, the other, I'm oh, telling terrible boat stories. The other one, the other one, we're going, we're going from I think Cherbourg in France to Southampton in England, and on a car ferry, and uh, it had four or five decks, and we were on the top deck because that was the only deck that had a bedroom. And uh, so Sus there were two beds there, so Suzanne, 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 Suzanne took one, <laughs> and the other couple we were with took the other one. And I decided I was going to sort of stay awake that night and make sure everything was okay. So we leave in the dead of night, it's pitch black, we're crossing the English Channel, which normally is very rough, and all of a sudden, it hits. And I'm on the fifth, uh, Oh. Deck. Wait, what? Where were you going? From I think Cherbourg. I think it was Cherbourg in France, with our car oh. to Southampton in England. And across the English Channel. You were in your car, or you had a little? No, no, no. You no. had a room. No. Well, you we get off the only, the, You 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 drive on, and then yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, we had the only room on the boat. And Zanny was in one bed, and the couple we were with was in the other bed. Oh. And the boat, I mean, it was really doing oh, this, God. okay? And every time it would do that, the water would splash against the window that I was looking out of. Oh. 
and that was the fifth, fifth deck. Level of and every terrifying. time it would go like this, there was a, a metal garbage can on its side that would roll across the deck, making that noise and pound to the other side. It's like, pshh, pshh, pshh. Wait, and did Zanny get scared? No, she was sli she, she slept she through slept. the whole thing. <laughs> they all did, the three of them slept through the whole like, thing. She was probably like, oh, wasn't that a nice night? I was so stressed out when we got there, I started yelling at them. Well, then, you know, Violet on her Instagram, like her feed will show her all these horrible... No, it's on TikTok. Oh, it's TikTok. 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 Like on like going through the North, North Sea, you know, the North TikTok? Sea? Have you seen those videos, Ellen? This is a, a subgenre of like oh, Gen Z culture. It's, it's North awful. Sea TikTok. And it's basically like... <laughs> Like just these TikTok videos that'll show you the worst things that happen. They're like the North shipping sea. boats, and they the yeah. the waves must be sixty feet. Like it's, it's crazy. Well, the other bad boat experience I've had <laughs> is amazing. I haven't thought about this before. This is crazy. You have a lot. So I was living on a houseboat. Oh yeah. In, in Sausalito, and uh, Suzanne, we were. I was courting Suzanne then. And she lived in a little house up the hill, about a block and a half away. So she just walked to you? Uh, well, well, no, I'd pick her up every day. Okay, yeah. yeah. And, uh, oh, she could have walked. Yeah, why didn't she walk? She could have walked. She's probably wearing heels. <laughs> so someone gave me a gift of a sailboat, a little plexiglass sailboat with one sail. And I'd never sailed in my life. And one day I'm by myself, I have nothing to do all day, it's a beautiful day, and I'm thinking, I'm going sailing. How, how tough can it be? And it's one sail, what's the big deal? <laughs> so I get in the boat and I unhitch it, you run whatever you do to it, you untie it from the houseboat, and we take off, and it's fast. And it's like two, it's a, a tri, not a tri, a biroman, a biroman, right? Is that a, I don't a know. A biroman? If, it, if there's a trimaran and it's three hulls, wouldn't two hulls be a bi that makes Catamaran. Sense. Pardon? Catamaran. Catamaran, that's it. She and your cats, where is... She's right over there. She's making her way. So, anyway, now the wind is pulling me right into the middle of uh, the bay, San Francisco Bay. Now it's getting a little scary because there are waves and also that's where the sharks live. Mm. So that's why guys have never made the swim from being in jail. You know, what's that? Oh, Alcatraz. Not, I was going to say Azkaban. <laughs> Alcatraz. <laughs> Alcatraz. Alcatraz. I don't think anyone's ever made that swim because shark, sharks come along and go, okay, it's lunchtime. Oh, it's shark infested? That yeah. Water? Yeah, exactly. People who try okay, to I'm gonna I'm going to show you guys the North Sea on TikTok. Check this out. What is that? Well, this is TikTok. I'm showing Instagram first. It's awful. Hold so on. anyway, the wind pulls me underneath the Golden Look Gate Bridge. And the wind is coming from every direction. Oh my God. And I'm trying to fight it to get this sailboat to move. Awful. But it just keeps going this way and then this way and a little bit here and then two back like that. And it's terrifying. And then... There's a huge naval ship. I don't know if it was an aircraft carrier, but it was huge because there's a, a naval thing off the bay and it was going to that place. And it's coming right toward me. I'm not kidding. And I thought, these things take miles to stop. So this thing's never going to be able to stop for me. And there I am in my little stupid <laughs> sailboat. <laughs> stupid. I kept thinking to myself, I'm stupid, <laughs> stupid. So I thought, I'm just gonna let the sail go and see what happens. And that was the best thing I could have done. Cause I so you the, just stopped trying. And I stopped trying and the sail picked up the wind and took me that way. Wow. But I did get the wake from that aircraft carrier, okay? Oh, and, the, oh. Yeah. Oh. What, what did she do? She said no. <laughs> she, was, she was enjoying. Yeah. The scratches, and then she said, Meh. and then she went and grabbed my arm. <laughs> uh uh. Wait, so what's the Is that the ripples? Well, the wake is when a giant boat goes through, mm -hmm. it creates, like, if this is the wave, okay, mm -hmm. it goes like that, 
and so it separates the water and it becomes two big waves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I know that. Yeah. Uh, you guys are all worried about my hands. Um, they're healing. This is, I had my spots taken off because they were too deep to do topically. So I had them frozen off. So this is day nine. And I highly recommend you try to prevent your spots with one of our great brightening serums or our younger hands. Because once you get them, this has not been fun. This is 10 days. So you, you had them... Check out for it. Frozen, yeah, the dermatologist froze them off. Yeah, my dermatologist, we call him the crazy doctor. Uh huh. Because as soon as we get in there, he, he says to me, Shut up! Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. And I take off my shirt. So he examines me and he, says, and he has. He has the, the freezing stuff, I guess the liquid nitrogen. Yeah. It's like 200 below zero. Exactly. And he's got a, a can of it there, a little sprayer. Yeah. And he, he, he puts it on all your things. That's something else, you know, nature. Nature. Who, who had those little things when they were 20 years old, right? The who, age spots? Who had spots on their hands when they were 20 years old? Yeah, no. Huh? Just. But anyway, it, it's just it's just cosmetic. It's not they're not precancerous or anything. But I just had it done to my hands and my face, and you just gotta you know go a couple weeks before it clears up, and then I will have less spots. Yeah. But then you can't go in the sun, right? Uh, too bad I'm going to Cabo tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> guess you're going in the sun. <laughs> I'll wear sunscreen. I'll wear hats. But a girl's gotta live. You're right. Girl has got to live. Yeah, I've been. It's not. It's not sunny today, but on, on sunny days, I do like 20 minutes. I go out there in my uh, little little bikini underwear. Yeah, that's how I first met you. Oh, that's right. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I answered the door in my underwear. Yeah, weren't he had on purple underpants? Oh, I just, just wanted her to know. Purple underpants. Who she was marrying into. Oh my this God, is so our free funny. gift today, you guys. Um, Styling gel, $29.99 retail value. If you buy anything at SuzanneSummers.com for $29.99 or more, you'll get a little pop-up and it will say, would you like this free gift? And then you'll say, yes, add to cart and there will be no charge for it. So you don't need a promo code. This is a limited time offer. So if you would like that free gift, today is January 31st. So it'll be good January 31st and February 1st. So are these body washes different or the same? They have different, different scents. Flavor. They are? Yeah. Because it says... Gel douche. Gel douche. I really love the body washes. Because drugstore bar of soap doesn't really cut it for me. They really dry me out, first of all. The drugstore soaps make me itchy. They dry me out. Even nice soaps, too. Like, even, like, you get a nice soap, but it doesn't mean it's organic. It doesn't mean it's not toxic. These keep your moisture, like, they keep my moisture, I find. So they keep me my skin hydrated, but you still feel like you're getting that clean. And even though we don't use SLS, so you don't get those suds, like, look at these bubbles up here. It still lathers really it's well. It's coconut cleanser. Yeah. Cocoa cleansers are... They're more mild, but they're also really nurturing for your skin. So you actually clean and nourish at the same time. I, I, it feels that way using it. Which, which one do you like better, wild orange vanilla or lemon verbena? You know, uh, I guess I've used them both without really knowing which is which. <laughs> uh, probably the wild orange. And lemon, like verbena lemon, verbena is well. lemon verbena is my favorite. I lemon like the wild lemon. orange too. I think. Oh, they're both so good. They're all great. But I, I think it's fun always asking people their favorites. So all you have to do is spend twenty nine ninety nine, and you get this, which is the styling gel, which is worth twenty nine ninety nine. Now, if you're really smart, here's what you'll do. Rather than going on SuzanneSummers.com and buying several things and getting this free, you can go on it several times, you see. <laughs> Caroline, Caroline's giving me 
<laughs> That's what I would do. Okay. Okay. Don't yell at me when you don't make any money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like you do every week. You know, <laughs> you know, the reason we're all here is because Suzanne told us to be here. Mm -hmm. Okay. She said, I want you to keep mainly to Caroline. Keep developing new, fabulous, organic products for my ladies. That's why we're here. That's and the true. few gentlemen who have a feminine side, like me, for example. I have a feminine all the, side. All the products are unisex. Yeah. They're all they're all great. I like doing a spa day every so often. Really? Yeah. What do you do on your spa? Day? Well, I do my face mask. The, the face face mask, right? Okay, yeah, mask. And then I do the Which hair. Which mask do you do? Oh, I don't know. He uses the rescue mask. The rescue I mean, mask. the rescue for the hair, the recovery mask for the face. Yeah, the yeah. recovery mask, yeah. Okay. And then I do the thing in my hair as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Hair mask. Yeah. I like doing the little eye thing. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the eye cream. This, yeah, the eye cream. Okay. Yeah. And uh, then I put some uh, of the uh, stuff you use to shrink your turkey neck. What's that stuff the called? Neck oh, the neck firming serum? Neck firming. Yeah. yeah and the neck firming stuff. cream. They're both so good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me tell you how great the neck firming stuff works, okay? I put it on and within 15 minutes it's choking me. Okay? <laughs> That's how quickly it works. Okay? So you have That's to have your, you have to have your iPhone with you. <laughs> and like mine. I'm on speed dial at 911. <laughs> so just in case the, the choking becomes too bad, you push 911, and those guys with the big jackets, they all wear big jackets. They do. They all come, they come with equipment, they hook you in, and you like, well, you're okay. And you either go to the hospital, and they say, well, everything's fine, Mr. Hamill. Okay. No, I'm just kidding, of course. But it, it happens to work. It's like a seven-day plan, right? Everyone is quoting Suzanne, saying, "That's Al lying." <laughs> That's Al lying. That's so funny. Um, you also like the volcanic scrub, right? Mm. The volcanic scrub. The I have to give credit to my dear, dear friend Larry Flax. Larry Flax was the co-founder of California Pizza Kitchens. And one day he said to me, why don't you have a line for men? And I said, I don't know, guys don't seem to, you know, whatever. So we did, we developed like two or three products and this was one of the products that I happen to love. I love it, I use it regularly, keep it in the shower. And it's made from volcanic stuff, Pumice, right? volcanic, like it's made from lava, the pumice, right? Lava. From lava. volcanic uh, pumice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. We're not, yeah, we're not, we don't have it here today. No, but you can get anything on the site yeah. for, you know, anything $20.99 or more, or $29.99 or more. Yeah, $29.99. And you get a free styling job. Um, I also love the, I love talking about the scrubs. I love the peach one, two, and then. The, oh, the, the exfoliators? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's and then too. I love the. Because that's got peach pits, right? Yeah. And Polish the, peach pits, yeah. I love the Manuka honey. That one's the lightest one. It's um, the least aggravating. Oh, you mean the foaming? The foaming. The foaming exfoliating exfoli cleanser. Yeah. yeah. I like the. Uh, There's a lighter exfoliation. The, uh, the, the something with a slight tint. What is that? Uh, the sunscreen. What was it? The sunscreen. Sunscreen. Yeah. Yes. With a slight tint. I think we have a new version of it, right? We do. Um, we have two colors. We have one that's called sand and one that's called bronze. But it doesn't have to match your skin tone exactly. It blends. Mm -hmm. It just knocks back the white because zinc oxide is white. Um, Jimmy, the liquid oxygen, we're still at least a month away. They're waiting on one ingredient and it's not quite there yet. That's the, my favorite product. I know. Good thing you have some here. The chocolate um, snack bars. I just tasted another sample. Wasn't quite good enough. I sent it back. We gave notes. I should have another sample in a, another couple weeks, but it's gotta be great. Awesome. We're gonna make you a chocolate snack bar. Great. It's gotta be great. And it was just a little, just was, wasn't quite there yet. 
everyone said, no, this is good. And I said, it's good, but it doesn't make me, like, I'm not dying to yeah, it should open. be great. Yeah, it should be great. So. Yeah, that makes sense. I love all the testing that we do here. Oh, I was blown away. Caroline sent me the testing for, can I mention the name of the product? Yes, it's an exciting it's called new product. Collagen Custard. Mm -hmm. Wait till you guys see this. It's going to be, it's so good. What? It's so good, the collagen yeah. custard. We, she sent me pages of research and pages from the attorneys we use who specialize in this area so that we can make the right claims and not make stupid claims like a lot of people who just go online and tell you that it's going to cure cancer. So it's pages and pages of stuff for every single product we develop. And every word on every package, right. you know, we really carefully, we don't say something can do something unless it's been proven in a study that we have really high-end FDA attorneys who make sure that we're compliant. And a lot of people aren't. So, you know, the manufacturer of this product, he's like, but everyone says this about collagen. Everyone says it does X, Y. I was like, we are not everyone. We hold ourselves to a much higher standard. So yeah. I said, let them learn all of that from other manufacturers, but when they come to us, we're only going to say what we're allowed to say. But it's a dessert. Yeah. It's how you get your collagen. It is low sugar. It has protein in it. It has marine collagen peptides. Is it like a powder or does it come? It's a powder. It looks like gut renew, but you put it in a little dish and you add a little plant milk and it becomes like this delicious, this delicious little pudding. And it's a great, way to get your collagen every day without having to like drink some nasty thick so you, thing you, in water. You wouldn't necessarily rub it on your face. <laughs> Only if you wanted someone to lick it off. <laughs> and now you're talking. <laughs> no. Gloria would have a heyday. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but then she'd be collagen dominant. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is Did internal you? collagen. This is one that you eat in order to get the benefits of collagen. And it's the best kind of collagen that you can get. Marine collagen peptides are much more easily absorbed by your body than, <clears throat> than the mammal forms. Well, so we get collagen from what? From cows fish. And from fish. fish. No, just from fish. Yeah, yeah. you can get it from yeah. bovine or fish. pig, but we get ours from fish. But it doesn't have any fishy taste. It tastes like chocolate pudding. So when pudding. you eat fish, do you get collagen? Um, wow, what a question. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like That's anything else. When you like, eat fish, do you get collagen? Like when you eat turmeric, you yes. get, you know, when you eat turmeric. Are you being gross? Gross? What do you mean? Me? No, I think it's in the bones, though. Pardon? I think it's gross. more, in, Violet, I think it's more in the bones. <laughs> It's okay. more in the bones. Well, sometimes when I eat like a piece of salmon, there are bones in it, so I guess I'm getting some collagen. Yeah. And it just makes you prettier. That's what that's what happened to Violet. She ate salmon bones and look how pretty she is. <laughs> yeah, you no, you do stuff. I mean there's so many good nutrients yeah. in especially those. We use only small, clean water, sustainably sourced That's amazing. Fish. Yeah. That's hard to find. Yeah, but you have to you have to find out what they're feeding them. Okay, because they feed them, because a lot of the, the farmed fish, like salmon, they have to add coloring to get the, the meat to turn pink. Yeah, no, we don't use any farmed fish in this product. Yeah. They're wild pollock. Oh. The same as we, it's actually the same fish that we use for our exceptional omega-3 supplement. Mm, I, I actually need more of that. Small, cold out. water fish because the bigger the fish gets the more toxicity because they eat the smaller That's right. fish. like tuna is huge right yeah it is it's big and i it, saw a video i love on it my, on my north sea tiktok of someone <laughs> catching a tuna the woman all by herself yes that was crazy that was crazy it's huge it's huge we have to show zeta when the show's over a tuna yeah it's a huge tuna okay well i happen to have a tuna story okay <laughs> Okay, and you're including Zanny. Are you ready? Okay. So this is like, I don't know. Who knew our theme today was yeah, going to be fish? fish? Well, it's all bats. Yeah. Decades ago, 
Fanny and I are 90 miles off the coast of San Diego on a fishing boat with some friends, or with some, on, on some friends' fishing boat. And Zanny's down below in the bedroom reading, and I'm up on the deck, you know, doing this. <sighs> and pretty soon, I pull this giant tuna right beside the boat. Wow. And there's a deckhand who's got a thing with a little hook on it. And what, they do, what he does is he grabs the, the fish and pulls the fish into the boat. And then it's over for the fish, right? So he's waiting for me to bring the fish a little closer to the boat so he can reach down and grab it. And all of a sudden, a giant shark swims around the boat, comes, oh! Suzanne heard all the noise and all the excitement, so she dropped her book and came to the, to the top uh, deck to watch all the excitement. And uh, the guy is getting ready to grab the tuna, and a big shark swims around the boat, goes behind the tuna, and... Stole your tuna? That was it. It was around the time that Jaws was out, too. Okay, well, you just spoiled the end oh, of the story. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were done. I'm sorry. Suzanne was downstairs reading Jaws. Oh, God. And she never went in the ocean after that, ever. Well, wow. once. She wouldn't even wade into the water. And, but I had a, a, no, not a canoe, a kayak. And I'm out kayaking, and she sees me having all this fun, and she said, I'm going to do that. So we did. And she had a great time. That was the only time she ever went wow. anywhere near the ocean while we're living at the ocean. Well, when my mom and dad were on, they were on some trip and my dad caught a fish like you did. And then, you know, when you get back to shore, then they tell you, they, they have the whole sales pitch that you need to stuff it and put a hanger on it so that you can put it over your fireplace. Right. Well, you can imagine what an argument was caused with my mother, because the last thing she wanted was this fish <laughs> hanging over her fireplace. So when we were little, I think she let him have it like down in the in the game room. It was like, you know, down below that those finished basements. The man cave. Yes, yeah. and that, well, it was the kid cave. And then when we moved to California, it ended up out in the garage. So I, rem I still have this memory of that Fish. What kind of fish long, was it? Oh, the long one? What's the one with the long oh, yeah, swordfish? Yeah. Marlin? Oh, marlin. Good. it was a marlin. Yeah. Go V. Where'd you pull that? Miss I, I'm Scared of the Ocean. I have no clue. It came to me really fast. You, I bet you've had a bad dream about it, right? No. I don't know. Encountering a marlin with a big pointy thing? I don't have any qualms about a marlin. No? No. Okay. It's just tsunamis. <laughs> but, but how many of you have that issue with someone and some husband or son or someone comes home with the fish well, and they want to hang okay. it on the wall? The joke uh -oh. in my generation is that, <laughs> okay, you know how dating apps, people are on dating apps. Well, yeah. people are on dating apps of all ages, but yeah. I don't know. Guys my age or, you know, in their 30s, whatever, they love posting a picture with a fish Mm -hmm. Like just like <laughs> holding the guy on a boat. With so a fish. like everyone just always says like if he has a picture with a dead fish in his hands, <laughs> like swipe, well, pass whichever one is the pass. Yeah. My my girlfriends say the same thing about all the boys from high school. Uh -huh. It's like whatever happened to and we'll say ah oh, he's. He's got a, you know, his profile pictures with a fish on the boat. <laughs> We're like, nope. <laughs> it's so funny. I mean, but listen, I understand if you're a fish, fish and yeah. he wanted a picture, like I'd be like, yeah, like I take the picture, but it's just so weird for some reason. Yeah, Marie well, said, or it could be a deer. No, the first, Ooh, the no. first fish I ever caught, the very first fish I ever caught, I sent it to the taxidermist to, to uh, stuff it and put it on a a piece of wood to hang on the wall. The fish was this big, okay? The fish was like 10 inches long. And there is my pride and joy hanging above the fireplace. Oh my God. Yeah. So many people are chiming in about fish and deer and I have oh a brother God. who has one. Yes, I we have 15 sailfish oh and God. sharks. So <laughs> funny. Sail it looks pretty neat hanging from the cathedral ceilings. Oh my God, you're hung them from the ceiling? 
That's crazy. That's crazy. I was eating so much over the summer in Sardinia. I was eating a lot of sea bream. Like that was the sea bream. Sea bream. It was just the go-to fish, but they put it on the plate, and it's the whole fish, you know. So I learned how to scale the fish. You know. Yeah. That was the end of the story. <laughs> <laughs> you had to cut it yourself. They didn't take the. Yeah, center? they didn't take anything off. So you I learned how to do it. You were at? Yeah. And Mallorca, Coastal and Atta Sardinia. Oh, in Mallorca. Oh. And Sardinia. The, but they're kind of in similar areas. So it makes sense that that would be. That's yeah. like their go to fish. It's called Orata. Well, I have a Mallorca story too. I want okay. to Oh, I think you told me this one. Oh, I did? I won't but, tell oh, you. Oh, no, no, no. You told me about <laughs> Danny and Lady. Oh, well, that was, that, was, that, was part, that was part of that trip. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, then you haven't told me. Okay. So we're in Spain, we're doing a, a, a business thing in, uh, what is it called? Mallorca? Not Mallorca. Mallorca Madrid, is the Mallorca? island. Right? Madrid? In, wasn't it Madrid? Oh, it was in... Uh, Barcelona? What was it? Barcelona? Barth Barcelona. <laughs> I said Barcelona and they said, no, 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 Barcelona. <laughs> Fuh, Barthe. Fuh. Okay, Barcelona. Okay. So anyway, we finished the thing in Barcelona, and I said, let's go to Mallorca, spend a couple of days. We drove all over Mallorca. Now, I'm a fruitaholic, and it was summertime, okay? It's summertime there, summertime everywhere when fruit is abundant, etc. We couldn't find a piece of fresh fruit. All we found was great sausages everywhere. You want sausages? We got them. Mm -hmm. No fruit. I don't know why not. That's my Mallorca story. No fruit anywhere? So strange. Oh, well, you know, when I was there, I did notice the land is very dry. So maybe it's not the best land for agriculture. Could be. Because maybe it doesn't rain that much. Yeah. But in Hawaii, we were in Hawaii one year, and I wanted a fresh pineapple and fresh mangoes, and we could actually drive through the pineapple fields and the fragrance of pineapples is like unbelievable. Wow. Couldn't buy a fresh pineapple and couldn't buy a mango. I could smell them. We went to a forest of mangoes. It was this uh, elderly gentleman that really cool. <laughs> who lived, uh, lived with his little white cat and he had acres and acres and acres of mango trees. And the fragrance off the mango trees was incredible. And of course, he couldn't eat, he, couldn't, he never even bothered picking them. I guess you don't even bother with mangoes when you own acres of them. And every so often, as I was walking through this forest of mango trees, you could hear thump mm. when one of them just got too heavy to hang onto the tree. And I thought, now that's, you're like worried about tsunamis? Yeah. I was worried about a mango on my head. <laughs> <laughs> my girlfriend and I used to go to Maui because her parents had a, a place there, Cami. Mm -hmm. and there was a huge mango tree right at the right at the front of oh, where the yeah. the area was where all the townhouses were and we used to sit under that tree and just eat mangoes until we were full they're so beautiful yeah. mango trees jeff and i we went on this one hike well actually my friend leaf shirts because we and where were you Kauai. leaf is from Kauai, and so he's the one who originally took me on the hike but when I saw this, I was with Jeff on that same hike, and it's the most beautiful hike along the Nepali coast. And it's, you're literally in a jungle hiking mm -hmm. along the coast, but like crazy jungle foliage and trees. And, and the cool thing about Kauai is that there are no dangerous species there. So you don't have to worry about snakes or anything. And anyway, it's this beautiful hike, and then it takes you to a secret beach that you can only get to if you go on the hike. And while I was on the hike, I saw the most beautiful tree ever, and it was just bountiful and drooping with huge mangoes. Wow. Yeah. The I way would, they grow is so interesting. Yeah, that would be heavenly for me. By the yeah. way, I planted a mango tree on our driveway. Yeah. And when I planted it, it had 19 mangoes on it. Wow. Okay, those golden ones, I call them honey mangoes. Yeah, mm -hmm. the best ones. And eventually they all fell off. They told me it was going to fall off because the tree's in shock and it's got to re-adapt. Mm -hmm. I don't have any mangoes. Aww. The tree's been there for a year. Oh. Well, yeah. they grow in the summer, right? I guess they do. 
Probably, I would assume. So maybe this summer. Okay, this summer I'll have mangoes. That was my favorite part about coming to your Malibu house. Like we'd come and have sleepovers when we were little at their house. And the best part was that they had this giant bowl of mangoes and they were the best kind. Like the mm. kind you can't get at the grocery store that are orange, not the red mangoes. Those aren't that good, they're stringy. So they had the orange ones, they had lychees and incredible peaches, like donut peaches and nectarines, yellow nectarines, white nectarines, yellow peach, white peach, all different kinds. Well, He's a fruitaholic. Yeah, he is a fruitaholic. Um, if you guys came in late, I have a few people asking what the deal is today. We have a free Suzanne Organics styling gel. Just buy anything for $29.99 or more at SuzanneSummers.com. You'll get a little drop down menu that will say, hey, would you like this free gift? And they'll add it to your cart for no charge. This offer is good um, today, January 31st, and tomorrow, February 1st. After that, it likely will not be around. So if you wanna get that free gift, jump on in. It's our last day of January. So we're rounding the horn right now. Yeah. I've never heard that. <laughs> we, rounding the well, horn. Well, it's also a ship. Yeah, it's a, it's, whole, it's, the whole theme is nautical today. Yeah, it's yeah. a nautical term, it is. rounding the horn. Okay. Cape Horn, right? At the bottom, at the tip of South yeah. America. It's Should like we talk one about of the it most, a little longer? It's one the, of the most the dangerous weather, passages. Where the weather is really bad. Oh, oh gosh. I don't want to think about it. I, I don't want to think about I it. I think, doesn't the Suez Canal sort of prevent ships from going around the horn? I can't remember. What I thought is that if you want to go to Antarctica, you have to take a flight all the way down to Cape Horn, like all the way down there, and then you take the ship to Antarctica. Ooh. That's what I thought. I have an Arctic story. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I, do. You actually? I do. I do. I spent three weeks in the Eastern Arctic what in Canada. On Baffin Island, in a little village called Frobisher Bay, and I was doing a documentary there on Eskimo children. That's what? really interesting. I spent three weeks there. I didn't know that. What a and, life! And the cameraman was a French guy, French Canadian, and the audio guy was the German guy, and they were like Laurel and Hardy. Okay, they kept crashing to each other, but they were funny and they meant well. So one day they said, so we're gonna take you out on the tundra, which is the, 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 the part of the Arctic where no one lives. And I said, great. So they put all the equipment on the dog sled and they put me in the dog sled and they're hanging onto the back of the dog sled and everyone thinks the Arctic is snow and ice and it's all perfectly smooth like a skating rink. It's not, it's rocky. And it, you know, it goes like that. So as where the dogs are, you know, pulling us out to the tundra, and the the the, uh, the not the basket, the the thing we're sitting the in. The sled. What is it? The sled. The sleigh is bouncing up and down, and pretty soon, the camera and the audio equipment are bounced right off the sleigh, and they're bouncing along the ice, and oh. that added another week to our stay there because oh. yeah. But it was quite incredible because I met these two guys, uh, two Eskimo guys, and uh, they were gonna show me how to build an igloo. I said, great. So uh, we get out to the tundra and they start cutting giant slabs of ice out of, I guess it's from the lake or the ocean, I guess it's a lake, and building the igloo. And there's the light inside an igloo when the sun is shining is magical. Everyone looks beautiful because the light ref ref refracts through the ice. Oh, wow. So we're sitting inside the igloo and they said, okay, let's have lunch. And they pull out a, a leather bag and inside are little bite-sized pieces of uh, fatty meat from mm. seals. Yeah. Raw. That was the first wow. sushi. Yeah. Okay. Everyone thinks the Japanese invented it. They didn't. It was the Eskimos, thousands of Were years they ago. Inuit tribe. Inuit? Aren't they all Inuit? I don't know. I don't know either. But we don't call them Eskimos anymore. I don't know. That's why she's calling them Inuit. We no, call them Inuit. I don't know if it's a different thing. I've just seen Inuit 
people on TikTok and they talk about the the seal, the, the fatty seal meat. I don't know. Yeah, it's called. called uh, it's called. Um, I can't remember. Uh, it's called fatty yeah, seal. What is it? It's called fatty seal. Okay. We're at an hour, guys. Oh, right. It's gonna okay. cut us off. Well. Anyway. So long for a while. <laughs> We'll be back on Friday with Suzanne Selects. So don't miss it. All right. We'll see you Friday. So in case you're just tuning in. Bye, everyone. Okay, <laughs> this is my beautiful, wonderful granddaughter, Violet. Granddaughter, Violet. <laughs> granddaughter, Violet, who I love dearly. Aww. Okay. She's so beautiful, and I just love this woman. Aww. So great. I'm so lucky to have Violet and five other grandchildren, and there's not one dud in the whole pack. What are the odds of that happening? Okay. So. Good parenting. Thank you. I love you. Yeah. I love you love too. You. All right. Good night, guys. Good we night. love you. Bye. 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 Bye.